Right, hello, and welcome to this week's Select Box. Um, this week, I'm delighted to be joined by Gareth John, um, CEO of First Intuition, and they are professional accountancy training provider. Um, centres all over the UK, they cover everything from AAT to level seven professional accountancy qualifications. So welcome, Gareth, how are you? Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm brilliant, actually. It's been a very busy few months, Lucy, but uh, all, all going in the right direction, all very positive, actually, surprisingly, given the kind of wider you know, economic situation that obviously the, the pandemic has put us under. Yeah, I, I bet you kind of seen some big changes for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. You know, we've had to respond very, very quickly, you know, right from the outset of the the, the lockdown. The biggest impact for us really was the uh, various awarding bodies had exams disrupted. So we mm -hmm. had to you know, put various measures into place to kind of keep students moving, keep students progressing, keep students studying uh, mm -hmm. over, the, over the last few few months. OK, good. Well, I, I mean, I, I want to say that obviously we, we've had a chat before um, and I've got a very good kind of understanding of you, Gareth, and also First Intuition and how that came about, um, which I want to say, if anything, puts you in a really good position to be able to cope um, with kind of things that aren't necessarily on the agenda um, to help your students, employers and obviously your staff to kind of see things through. So if we could just start by getting a little bit of background info about you, um, you've spent a massive kind of portion of your career doing the training involved with the training um how did that come about well I, I mean I trained as a chartered accountant sort of straight out of kind of college and university to be honest because at that stage I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself and for me accountancy was a way of kind of keeping doors open mm -hmm. keeping my options open I kind of figured you know every industry every sector every organization every country needs accountants mm -hmm. um and but actually as, as i went through that training i kind of came to realize that perhaps actually being an accountant wasn't really for me uh, but i really enjoyed kind of delivering on internal training that I was involved in at the firm mm -hmm. that i trained at and so i tried my hand soon after qualifying at teaching you know went into professional education and been in it ever since about 24 years now absolutely love it you know i love the fact that uh, you know, you get to, to sort of feel like a little part of the start of so many hundreds and thousands of, of careers for, you know, young professionals moving on to a, such a variety of different points. You know, I've got former students who are managing partners, chief financial wow. officers, you know, CEOs and, you know, LinkedIn's great. Actually, I love LinkedIn for kind of keeping tabs on former students. I was going to say keep abreast. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, it's one of the nicest things of my, my life, really, being able to sort of see the impact you've had on, you know, people's potential and people's progression. That's fab. That's brilliant. And obviously, like you say about the impact there um, and kind of relating that to the to the past few months. Um, I mean, what's the impact been just on you guys alone, you know, as the training provider, obviously the staff that you have delivering that um just the, the, you know, the practicalities of everything kind of happening behind the scenes for you and also the award and bodies. How have, how have you, um, as the institutions, had to kind of react to the past few months? Well, I mean, we, you know, we, we, and I know the word, the word of the pandemic is pivot, isn't it? And, you know, we, uh, we pivoted <laughs> very, very quickly from literally one, I remember it was a Tuesday we were all in class and all students were pretty much in class doing their normal training. And mm -hmm. this was, actually prior to Boris Johnson's announcement, I think the weekend at the end of that week, but we we made a decision that we felt that we needed to go virtual even at that stage. So okay. so literally overnight, those students who've been in the classroom on the Tuesday, on the Wednesday, they were all at home in virtual classrooms being taught by the same tutors with the same material just remotely. And actually it went more smoothly than I, than I could possibly have hoped for actually very, very because um, we we were quite well set up we already had a very well developed kind of online and virtual delivery mm -hmm. in fact we are we're the current um pq magazine online college of the year for instance we're the current <laughs> AAT, uh, AAT, um distance learning provider of the year so we were very well set up to mm -hmm. deliver virtually um but even then you know to say that we switched all of our classroom students around the whole country overnight pretty much onto virtual classrooms um, went very very smoothly and actually the, the delivery over the last few months has been kind of fine you know yeah. students have enjoyed it employers have enjoyed it I think it's worked very well for us the challenge has been the 
the availability or lack of availability of exams for for a lot of the awarding bodies initially you know exams yeah they were put to pause for quite a while weren't they initially yeah, suspended cancelled yeah. postponed so you know and that I think for the students levels of motivation and you can imagine that that creates so much uncertainty about when they may or may not be able to sit exams so, mm. so you know we, we were trying our best just to keep them kind of keep them ticking over keep them warm with the papers they were studying until the opportunity mm. did arise them to, to actually sit their exams and you also had the um i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right but the attitude festival um focused on aat students anyone from any training provider anywhere if they were under that that course of study were able to access the, the online modules and webinars that you guys provided for a week and i i snuck into one um and found it really really engaging gareth so um i guess that's just a, like a further extension of what you guys do yeah I mean, that, that, that that festival we ran um you know, a couple of weeks ago it, it was the outgrowth of because we were we were running a series of sort of free revision sessions for AAT students we'd because the exams had been suspended we'd had to put some sort of weekly sessions on for our own students to kind of keep them ticking over mm -hmm. and we had students we had students who were kind of primed to sit their assessments in late March and then it was all suspended so they couldn't so so we were just doing weekly sessions for them it was actually one of my colleagues Kelly who suggested well we're hosting these on zoom why don't we just open the doors and let anyone in because we appreciated there were going to be a lot of students perhaps at FE colleges who didn't have much online mm -hmm. contingency so we appreciate there's going to be a lot of students looking for support and we wanted to do what we could during the situation to help students and we've had something like 4,000 registrations I think across those wow. three sessions we've been running and we then thought well let's let's pull it all together for this festival we ran and as well as technical sessions we had some we had some great speakers you know, talking about their careers we had um some skill sessions looking at things like time management mm -hmm. the real mix it was, it was really great actually and I, but the best feedback for me you know we had lots of nice feedback around specific sessions but i saw a lot of feedback around for students who'd been in limbo for you know four months it acted as a real kind of catalyst to get them studying again and just build that study spirit in them and i was just Brilliant. delighted to see that sort of feedback Brilliant. And obviously, I mean, you you know, you, you remain engaged with the students as much as you can, um, but you kind of also extend that to the employers that you're engaged with as well, don't you? I know you've done quite a lot um, over the past few months in, in response to what's been going on. Obviously, you know, from you guys having to work from home for a period, um, students having to learn from home and just kind of thinking ahead to those who are employers that are going to be onboarding future students of yours um and how that works for them to do that in a remote and virtual way um and kind of keep that supportive team environment there for them so tell me a little bit about that because you've done quite a lot on your on your website as well haven't you about that well i mean I, you know I, I spend a lot of my time you know with, with relationships with the clients employers that we work with um i think it's you know perhaps one of the things that differentiates us from other providers is you know, myself, I'm one of the founders, you know, myself, other senior directors, we like having those personal links to our, our key clients in the different mm -hmm. regions. Yeah. So I, I'm very proud of the, the personal relationships I have with partners and you know, chief finance staff in different organizations, um, which I think, you know, it's, it's allowed us in the last few months because we have had to adapt very quickly. We've had to change programs very quickly. Yeah. And we've had to m message that. So we spent a lot of time just communicating, just getting messages out to employers. We've done various kind of weekly forums, um, you know, lots of emails. I mean, I felt at one point like I was emailing clients almost twice a day, almost <laughs> to the point where I was worrying I was going to be annoying them. But constantly they said, no, 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 you know, more information is better keep it keep it coming you know they, they needed to know what was happening with mm. you know, AAT, ICAW, ACCA, SEMA um, and you're right you know the next step now because one of the things I've been very reassured about is actually you know recruitment levels are strong yeah um, mo most employers are still recruiting in the same way they were planning back in January mm. so actually you know the COVID crisis hasn't seemingly disrupted Thwarted that as much as it perhaps could have done um in fact some some employers are actually recruiting more than normal yeah 
know, I think it's fair to say accountants are busy and expect to be busy. So, you know, recruitment is looking very, very strong. I think accountancy is quite a good sector in that respect, is that we are quite protected perhaps from, you know, issues in individual sectors. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we are now looking at a lot of our, you know, we've had a few start already, but a lot of our new students will be coming into a, a different environment to an new starter it's going to be predominantly remote if not entirely remote mm. um so yeah we've been working with employers we've been producing a lot of content to help employers with kind of onboarding remotely managing staff remotely uh, delivering their own internal training remotely something that we're you know pretty pretty familiar with now after after the years of experience <laughs> that we've got so um so yeah but it, actually for me the you know as much as it's been a terrible situation since mid-march it's it's actually been a great opportunity to, to actually deepen a lot of the relationships that we have with our clients and actually even uh, increase the number of clients we work with. We've, we've got quite a lot of new employers that have seen how we've reacted and have, have really? come to work with us as a, as a result of that. Yeah. So, um, and it, you know, bizarrely, and I suppose it's the technologies, you know, that we can use for video meetings and conferences that I've actually, I've talked to a lot of clients kind of more regularly than I normally would when I'm trying to travel all different parts of the region mm -hmm. um, to actually have physical meetings, you know, you, you, your time can be a lot more efficient through various online channels. Definitely, definitely. I second that. And I think what from what you say there in terms of, I guess we're I'm not going to say completely similar, but in terms of where we sit within the chain. So obviously us as recruiters and you guys as, as the training provider, you're, you're privy to the information that everybody kind of needs who you deal with, be it your learners or your clients or our clients or our candidates. And it's kind of putting that into one place and then feeding it out where, where necessary. So it is a re really important um, position to be in. And like you say, with the with the new technology, it just makes everything a little bit more efficient and able to, you know, enabling you to share more information and more often, um, which is fantastic. So I mean I mean well, in, I felt in, in, in the last few weeks I felt almost more like a press officer than a tutor, <laughs> you know. It's it's constantly just pushing information out to the right people, whether it you know, and a lot of it's around the awarding bodies, but also things like yeah. apprenticeship. You know, there've been some some big changes around non-levy apprenticeships, going mm -hmm. on to the apprenticeship service. There's the the incentives that, that Rishi introduced in his uh, summer statement. That, yeah. You know, I think very very good for employers. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's just almost every week there's something slightly different that you've got to push out. So, yeah, communication has been really king. So just going back um, just a couple of seconds there, Gareth, where you said about obviously um, – you haven't really noticed that much of an impact on the recruitment. You've kind of gained more employers that you're working with to deliver the training, which would suggest they're happy to, you know, they've got a confidence in, in upskilling staff um, and obviously trying to ensure that staff loyalty, which is which is brilliant. Um, and with, uh, you know, the incentives such as um, the apprenticeship scheme, how do you kind of foresee things changing or maintaining even over you know may, maybe just through the to the end of the year How, what would you be your thoughts on that i think probably the biggest difference we're going to see this year in terms of the new intake is it's going to be i think a much more split intake than we typically see okay um I mean, normally we see the vast bulk of new students coming in in around about september um, you know, whether they're school, college or university leavers, you know, coming in for, for the big new intake. And I think a lot of employers, particularly where they're going to be onboarding people remotely or they're going to have, you know, social distancing in an office and reduced capacity in the mm. workspace, um, that they're actually separating out. So instead of taking maybe 15 in September, they'll take five in September, five in November, five in January, okay. just to, to just make it easier for them to manage the logistics of the onboarding uh -huh. and that initial, that initial induction, if it is being done remotely, or if, or maybe they can bring five of them into an office together rather than having 15 kind of trying to do some training. So, so I, th I think overall numbers look pretty good, mm. but I think what we are going to see is it's going to be a bit more spread out, a bit more fragmented. Just the practicalities. Yeah, yeah, I think I think often and, and possibly a degree of uncertainty and maybe some employers just think, well, if we hold off a little bit, it just means that things will be a bit clearer or we will be able to be more back in the office together. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, 
because it's just such an unknown, you know, as to where things may continue to develop in the coming weeks. It is definitely kind of a big question mark over a lot of things, isn't it? But like you say, I think it's very positive with the resilience that, I mean, you've seen, I've certainly seen from talking to clients with regards to accountancy and finance, I think, well, you said it's kind of the, the word of the word of the pandemic pivotal. Um, that is exactly what accountancy and finance is to any business. It's that kind of pivotal, pivotal hub. Um, and no matter what, whether it's kind of just kind of close ranks and, and kind of maintain as much as you can or whether it's actually to drive anything, you know, drive something forward. You you need that function. You need that to be there. So I think that's definitely got um, got a lot to do with it. Um, and I think, yeah, well, I think you know whether things are good or things are bad. You need accountants, yeah. kind of, you know, looking after things. And you know, I've always felt, I've always thought one of the appeals of a career in finance is that the accountant is perhaps the only person in an organisation that talks to every other part of the organisation. Yeah. You know, because, you know, they've got to know what's going on in operations. They've got to know what's going on in marketing. They've got to know what's going on in recruitment and mm -hmm. HR. So I, I always see the accountant as the hub with all the spokes of the other parts of the business. So the accountant, I think, always gets a really great overview of the whole organisation. They're often talking even to, to the board and the senior management team, so they get that exposure as well. And I, I totally agree. I mean, the, you know, the recovery from this situation over the next 6, 12, 24 months, you know, I think accountants are going to be able to play a really valuable role in helping organisations navigate through the recovery period and not mm. just for their technical skills. I mean, with a, with apprenticeships that have been such a growth area in accountancy, it's also the, the broader communication, decision making, critical thinking, leadership skills that actually apprentices are also having embedded into their programme. So yeah. I think, you know, organisations that have a good, well-trained team of finance staff you know, they're going to be in a great position to hopefully benefit from, because there are, I think there are going to be benefits in the coming months. You know, I hear a lot about um, organizations looking to to have more local sourcing and local supply chains. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think there'll be, the, the, there are domestic opportunities for businesses able to, to take advantage, I think. Brilliant. Okay. So on um, a bit of a final note then, Gareth, if there's anyone who is watching this, um, who is at all tempted or intrigued by a career in accountancy and finance, what would be your kind of main, main tip of advice for them? Um, I guess do research and you know, get as many, uh, talk to people, you know, talk to people who are already working in accountancy and finance, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's friends, family or, or other contacts. Um, you know, we, we've just held actually a, a series of very successful summer schools over the well, over the summer, um, which we <laughs> normally hold we normally hold in our centres, but we've done online, and actually that's proved to be phenomenally successful. Mm -hmm. you know, eight eight hundred, I think. Wow! You know, aspiring young accountants, some some at school, some at college, some at university, some who've just left. Um, you know, all interested in the different entry points, different career paths, mm -hmm. um, and and actually. It, We've recorded the sessions we have, so we've actually we're creating a, a kind of place on our website where we'll be hosting a an archive of those sessions Brilliant. for students to, to refer to. I think, I think that's it's, it's all it's, it's about giving them the information, giving them the guidance, which I think is so crucial at that stage in their careers. And and even the, the perennial question of if you want to become an accountant, do you need to go to university? Which I still get almost on a daily basis and I have to explain you know and I've got nothing against university you know it's a great experience mm -hmm. but you, cer you certainly don't need a degree if you want to become a professional accountant you know we see so many employers in you know Norwich and Ipswich and Cambridge and everywhere in the region that mm -hmm. they're actually looking more and more towards school leavers coming through on apprenticeship programs you know some of the, some of our highest caliber students are school leavers doing apprenticeships and doing something like the AAT qualification as a starting point, moving up to some of the higher level qualification. That's that's the other place you can look for information for those that are interested is each of the awarding bodies like AAT, mm -hmm. like ICAW. Um, they've got areas on their websites with lots of kind of promotional material for, for potential students. So Brilliant. they're a great place to look for kind of case studies of what the careers can do for, for people. Okay, excellent. And I, I, I guess I want to say as well, because of 
where we are at the moment, LinkedIn, have a little look about on LinkedIn, find other professionals, other people at your level, other people who have been at your level. Um, and, you know, I, I always find it the same. People are, are always more than happy to share. Um, and, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I think I bore people sometimes the amount I post on there, but often it's around, you know, issues relevant to aspiring accountants, looking at how apprenticeships have evolved, yeah. looking at the entry points, the advantages of certain qualifications. So I'm, I'm always happy for people to, to kind of follow me and link with me on LinkedIn. All right. Then. Gareth John, get it. <laughs> get him on LinkedIn. Yep. Um, all right. Many Gareth John, I don't think on LinkedIn. No, I, I think yeah, you, you, you popped up first. You're fine. Um, okay. Well, I just want to say thank you very much for your time today, Gareth. It's been a pleasure as always. Thank you for inviting me. It's been real, really nice to talk to you. Good. Glad. Thank you. Um, anyone watching, we're going to post um, information with regards to any articles, information, um, the First Intuition website um, and anything else that we think might be relevant for you within the within the post um, attached to this. So thanks ever, ever so much for watching and see you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.